on the streets and it's begging. I'm thinking you've got a Heavily. good brain. You're it's a big Trees. Over the next eight minutes, I will tell you about trees in Malawi. They are at the center of a battle here between those who say they need to be protected and those who need to make a living of them being harvested. This is a story about charcoal. And my name is Aline Jumoyo. We start the story at one busy Zingwangwa market. This is just one of an infinite number of markets in Malawi. And just like all the others, you can find people selling charcoal here. The government of Malawi is trying to get its citizens to stop cutting down trees for charcoal. So much charcoal is sold at this stand that the earth has now turned black. Here is where I spoke with charcoal sellers and buyers. This man did not want his face shown on camera. He says he sells charcoal because there is a ready market for it and he gets enough money to sustain himself. This man says he buys and uses charcoal to prepare meals. He doesn't have any other means of preparing his meals such as an electric stove. This man says he's surprised that government is trying to get people to stop using charcoal. He has no other means to cook his meal. He says other countries use coal like Zambia and he thinks Malawians should be using that too. Let's head over to the offices of the Malawi Environmental Endowment Trust. Meet. Benson Chibezani is an environmental specialist at Meat. He explains the problems of charcoal. Charcoal is destructive. The process of producing charcoal is so destructive. You need a large area of green wood to be able to compress that into a 90 kg, 50 kg packet. On a small scale, charcoal might not be a bad thing, but Malawi is a small country and almost everyone uses charcoal. Chipezani says that if the number of trees in this country continues to decline, then Malawians will soon be facing other problems. Soil will erode, access to water during the dry season will be more difficult. This will lead to much harder farming conditions. In a country where most people are farmers, this is a devastating projection. These bags of charcoal were confiscated by the Regional Department of Forestry in Limbi. These tools were also confiscated from people illegally cutting and burning trees for charcoal. Mike Evans Galeta is responsible for law enforcement at the Limbi Regional Department of Forestry. He explains the government's position on the charcoal business. Uh, charcoal burning is not illegal as far as it is taking place on a private land. And that uh, if that charcoal burning is meant for domestic purposes, it's not illegal. But burning charcoal and using it for business is illegal. Because so mostly these charcoal people, what they do is they traffic charcoal and they also process charcoal without a license. For the past three years, you see that there was a prolonged dry spell in this district and that uh, the people, some people, uh, they were fully insecure. As a result of that full insecurity, what people did is to turn into the natural resource which is free, they had to burn charcoal and end their living. That's one of the contributing factors. Uh, because they look at a natural resource as something which is free, that's why most of the people flock to the natural resource. Let's head back to Zimbabwe market. This woman says she uses charcoal because it is affordable. This woman says she uses charcoal because there are a lot of electricity blackouts. She says she is poor and charcoal is cheap compared to other ways of cooking food. There is really market. Relative. We go back to Galeta's office at the Limbi Regional Department of Forestry. How uh, does the, uh, the forestry department handle the impounded charcoal? What, what do you do with it? 
according to the Act of 1997, they say after charcoal impounding, the next step is we need to dispose. Mostly here what we do is we send them to other government institutions, but some of them we sell. We sell simply because we need to get revenue. Uh, do you think that is like doing justice to the, to, the, to the ground person, the primary person who wanted to sell it to earn a living and you know, sustain their family? Uh, there are other alternatives people can use to earn their living, apart from solely depending on the natural resource. Uh, on a, a more human uh, a picture of it, uh, how would you feel if it were you in their shoes? Uh, you, you know when, when we are working, we need to combine, uh, of course we need to wear a human face, but at the same time we need to make sure that all these policies are, or, or these laws are being enforced. But if you also look at um, the effects of deforestation, you find that when we are trying to mitigate the problem with deforestation, we are doing something which is more human than if we can allow them to be, in, to, to be involved in charcoal business. Because if you look at the effect of climate change, all those have got never got the effects on the lives of the same people. So much as we understand that uh, confiscating them won't look good to them, but in the long run, you find that we are doing the best as far as their living is concerned. Everyone that I spoke with says they need charcoal to make their food. This all boils down to energy. I tried to speak with a representative of the Electricity Supply Corporation of Malawi, ESCOM, Malawi's energy supplier, but I was passed on from one official to the next over several days of trying to speak with someone. The challenge here is that right now most Malawians see burning charcoal as a necessity. Those who cut down trees and those who sell it rely on it for income to support their families. Those who use it say they have no other means of preparing their food. For these Malawians, the choice is between environmental degradation or mere survival. And if we don't do anything about it, we we'll end up uh, suffering. Sometimes we have to be forced to go on different routes for our own sustenance in the future. In Blanta, Malawi, I'm Elin Chimoyo. Streets and it's begging. I'm thinking you've got a Heavily. good brain. You're always being exhausted.